Happy Tuesday and glad you are here. You know, a question that comes to me a lot is, Mike, why do I have to be baptized? Okay, I was sprinkled as a child, I was sprinkled as an adult. Why do I have to be immersed? It's kind of clumsy, it's, um, it's not pretty. Nobody looks good that wet. So a lot of people are shy about it, and a lot of people uh, don't understand it, and we got that. Now, you would think with the name of Baptist that baptism would be pretty important to us. Now, first let me say that a lot of everybody in the Christian family, all of our traditions and all of our denominations bring something important and significant to the family. Uh, Presbyterians, uh, most of the time, they're the theologians of the group. Uh, if you're reading any serious theology, most of the time, you're going to be reading a Presbyterian. Uh, social conscience, uh, world hunger, slavery. Well, that's our Methodist friends. They're always at the cutting edge of those social justice movements uh, and have been from throughout their history. Uh, we got baptism right. Now, we didn't get everything right, but we got baptism right. The word baptizo. Usually, uh, literally means to drown, to die, D-Y-E, to saturate. Uh, you are held under the water uh, so long that, and, and so deep that there's not one stitch of you that is not dry. Uh, it was the practice of the early church. It was the Jewish tradition uh, of cleansing and washing that the, the early church inherited. And the reason we changed to sprinkling or pouring was we moved away from large bodies of water. We built big cathedrals with no plumbing. Okay, so that meant the priest had to carry the water all the way from the well into the sanctuary to perform the baptism. And sometimes, like if you're in the middle of the desert, there wasn't water to spare for baptism. So there was an accommodation made. I don't know, you want to think there was a big theological discussion and that the long meetings were held. It wasn't. A priest just got tired. I'm not going to carry any more water. We'll just use what we have and we'll sprinkle or we'll pour. Now, there are some of you who had that experience. And for you, it was as meaningful of an experience and a commitment as it possibly could be, and by no means, by no means, do you want me? Do, do I want you to hear me say that that's not valid? That's not at all what I'm saying. Uh, I would celebrate that moment with you because you were doing everything you knew to do, everything you 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 could uh, think of to be as obedient to Christ as you knew to be in the moment, and that is to be celebrated. Um, when it comes to what we believe about baptism, one, we believe it has to be an adult. Now, what do we mean by adult? We mean it is somebody that has to be able to understand the decision they're making. Uh, if, you, if you understand that infant baptism is more about the parents and the church than it is that child, that's a beautiful ceremony. For the priest, the pastor to hold that baby uh, even to mark that baby with a sign of the cross and say, this child belongs to us. And we're going to commit to raise this child in the ways and the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we're going to commit to love this child in the love that we know from Christ Jesus. It is a beautiful, beautiful ceremony. It has nothing to do with the decision of that child to follow Christ. It's a beautiful ceremony but it doesn't make that child's decision. That child's going to have to make their own decision. And that child's going to have to grow up to a particular age, and with everybody, it is different. And it has to do with the way you grew up, the way you... I was in church, uh, I was in church more times by the time I was seven or eight than some of you have been in your entire life. Okay, if the church doors were open, it was usually my mom and dad who were opening them. And so that's kind of the story of my life. Uh, so it has to do with your background. Your the, the, each child grows and matures in a different way. 
Uh, but the, chi the person making the decision has to understand the choice they're making. It has to be a choice that they make of their own free will. This is who I am. This is what I want to do. And I want to choose to follow Christ. The first testimony we have of you choosing to follow Christ is baptism. For the early church, this was the public profession of faith. You know, in the early church, they would have baptism once a year, and it would be on Easter. And if you said, I want to follow Christ, they put you with a mentor, a, a disciple uh, a minister or a discipler who would then teach you all the basics of the faith until that Easter Sunday when you would step forward and be baptized. And in that moment when you step forward, your mentor, your spiritual guide of the church would step up and and commend you to the church. I know their uh, experience is real. I know they're committed to Christ. Here are the things I know about it, and bring the testimony about you, and then they would baptize you, and they would put you under the water. The symbolism of baptism is that you are buried with Christ. You can't do that in a shower. You can only do that in a full body of water. You are lost, you are buried, you're gone from sight, and then you're raised up to new life with Jesus Christ. That's what the baptism says. It's the way that we say to the world in a way that, world, that words can't, this is the choice I'm making. This is who I was and that person is gone. This is who I am and this person is now born in Christ. Uh, that's what we want to say in baptism. And this is the first step that any of us have of obedience. It's the first moment that we can follow Christ. Christ himself modeled this by being baptized. And it's the time, first time as a believer we can actually do that something Jesus did. So when you're thinking about baptism and the decision you make, I hope this helps. You got any more questions, man? I'd love to talk to you about it and tell you more about why we believe what we believe and what it means to us and what it would mean to you. But it has to do with a symbol. The best way we can say to people, the old me is gone, is dead in Christ, and we've buried them. The new me, the power of the resurrection of the Christ, has now been raised to live a new life and faith and truth. So I hope this helps. I'll give you about 60 seconds. Mm, you're going to need more than that to think about this one. And I'll see you tomorrow.